As the world grapples with the COVID-19 pandemic, one year later, healthcare workers try to get as many people vaccinated as possible. Got a little stick here? Good job. But that also means answering questions, easing fears. Okay, that's, that means left. <laughs> <laughs> and addressing inequities. You have to look at COVID and healthcare through an equity lens. We know that our community has been quite burdened by COVID. How do you look at healthcare through an equity lens? Well, Dr. Melissa Tapey at Affinia Healthcare says it starts with acknowledging they exist in the first place. So we want to ensure that our community has all of that information so that they can make an informed decision. Affinia Healthcare is a community health system. It provides affordable primary and preventative care to tens of thousands of people. In light of the pandemic alone, data from Alaska to Virginia shows inequities everywhere from testing to initial data from vaccine rollout, something Tapey says we have to confront and recognize as a barrier. Um, we know that there may be more vaccine hesitancy mm -hmm. in our community, um, especially with African Americans, with other mm -hmm. folks of color, mm -hmm. with our immigrants. Mm -hmm. And so working through those challenges, the medical system has um, a history of some abuse, right, with those yeah. populations. And so we need to work through that. We need to continue to build trust mm -hmm. and give accurate information so we continue to build those relationships because we want this community protected. What Dr. Tapey is talking about goes back centuries. In 2008, the American Medical Association conducted a study on racism in healthcare. In the end, citing that the legacy of segregation, bias, and exclusion continues to adversely affect African American physicians and the patients they serve. It's something health professionals are having to confront as the fight to get a hold of COVID-19 continues. According to the CDC, long-standing systemic health and social inequities put people of color at an increased risk of getting and dying from COVID. To be a little more specific, that's things like discrimination, access to health care, lack of representation, housing, and gaps in education, income, and wealth gaps. Have you all experienced people with some hesitancy? Yes. Yeah. Even if they're here, that doesn't mean they're not a little anxious yeah. or they're not a little worried. Like mm -hmm. you said, this is a new vaccine, so I think those are normal feelings. Feelings Arlene Williams says she felt too. Yes, I was very apprehensive because because it, it came so quickly, the vaccine came so quickly, and usually it takes a much longer time to develop a vaccine. She really wanted to wait until medical experts got the kinks out. However, the risk of getting the virus wasn't something she wanted to gamble with. But I am a nurse, and I have patients, and, and I have family, and I want to make sure that I'm safe and I keep everyone around me. I want to make sure they're safe as well. That was on Graydon Ballard's mind as well. Yeah, you know, just a little bit of uh, questions, but I said I'd rather take my chances with the vaccine than, than take my chances with COVID. So. He owns a dental practice, and though he had his own reservations, he felt it was the right thing to do. It's easy. Yeah. 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 Okay. That Get works. vaccinated. <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much. Those are the syringes. Okay. This is where the vaccine is at. Okay. The famous liquid gold. Hesitancy over the COVID-19 vaccine is very layered. At one point, the World Health Organization named it a top threat to global health. Experts say part of it has to do with misinformation and disinformation. And yes, they are different. Misinformation is false info regardless of intention, while disinformation is thought to be deliberate. How is Affinia Healthcare grappling with all of this? Well, the CEO says it starts with open communication. Is that a barrier for, for you all's work when people can read all kinds of things that aren't even remotely close to the truth? Oh, certainly it is. It's um, especially we, complex during a pandemic. Sure. So our accountability to assure that our patients and other audiences have as much evidence mm -hmm. and information that's based upon the science. 
In fact, researchers at the National Institutes of Health say not only has disinformation confused and made people hesitant, but it's also overwhelming. Dr. Tapey, who's already gotten the vaccine herself, says that's why actually having conversations with patients is vital. They do have questions along the way. I review all of the consent forms as they come in, so to go through some of um, those questions, like if they're reporting any history of any allergies or if they've had a prior infection. We want them to ask those questions, yeah. again, because I think it, I do think it's important for people to have those questions answered sure. by sources that they trust. So what does the future of this work look like? That's it. Well, though there is a vaccine, we still have a road ahead, but those in the front line say the work no matter the challenges, must continue. Whatever long haul looks like, for as long as we can be helpful to our communities, as long as we can assure that our communities are safe, as long as the vaccine is available and our capacity will permit, we will continue to be part of the solution around vaccination.